standpoint call that comes into us is that the trees are touching the house, the rats are climbing from the trees to the roof, and they're getting in our building. This call has been so frequent that we have found it necessary to address this important topic. The rat is a key pest in our environment. However we eliminate the rat, it should be humane. We don't want a cruel method for the control of the rat. We feel that the use of poisons is a really dangerous, dangerous method to use on the control of the rat. When a rat has partaken of a neurotoxin or some other strong chemical poison, it can go right up the food chain. We don't willy-nilly want to put these poisons out to kill rats. The other thing that happens with the poisons, we've seen this again and again, when a rat is poisoned, what it'll do, it'll go to the smallest, most inaccessible hidey hole that they can find and they die there. The other method that is sometimes used are these sticky traps that actually tangle the rat up in these glue compounds. These are brutal and, and inhumane, and we have seen sites of ridiculous suffering. And it just isn't ethical, and we just cannot practice that. It, it's got to be humane. We feel the most humane method to control the rat is the traditional old snap trap for a couple of reasons. One is it kills them very quickly. Boom, they're dead. Number two is the carcass does not escape. We have the carcass there for disposal. Here is the method that we have found to be extremely effective. We have a Victor rat trap here, made in Pennsylvania, USA, actually American-made product, very good, effective product. Very strong, little bit dangerous. It can snap on you and be very painful. So if you set this trap, you want to be careful and do it properly so that you don't get caught in this trap yourself. Also, it should be placed in a location where a domestic cat or a dog or any other pets you may have will not be subject to the trap. And also it shouldn't be outside where it can get a bird or a raccoon or a squirrel or, or something else, an unintended target. Usually when you get the trap, the snap rod is pegged down with a, with a little clip. So we're just going to pry that out, pull that little staple out so that the release rod is now free. The next step is to prepare the trap for the bait. And what I like to do is just a regular drywall screw here, very useful. Get it under the little peg on the trap and just pry that tang up a little bit. And you'll see why we do this in a minute. We lift that up, you know, like about a 30 degree angle or more. We take a, an almond, just a regular almond. And what I do is on one side of the almond, I will scrape off the skin of the almond to release the oils. The rat has a keen sense of smell, it's going to smell this almond. And it is as though other rats have already been nibbling and they feel that, oh, now it's my turn. And so they're a little bit off their guard when they see that maybe someone else has already been nibbling on this bait. So very, very enticing, especially the fragrance. Then I roll the almond over, and again, using the same drywall screw, you simply drill a little hole in the back side of the almond. Now, you don't have to go all the way through the almond. Just drill a tapered hole. Then we take this little tapered hole and we wedge it onto the peg, as you see here. Just give it a little push, kind of rock it back and forth. Sometimes the almond will split in half when you do this. Just prepare another almond and do it again. So we have installed the almond onto the bait plate right there. And it's, it's pretty tight. That's not coming off. That, that is actually a fairly strong attach point. Far better than the old method where they used to put peanut butter on the bait trap. The rat will simply come and lick the peanut butter off and escape with the bait without getting caught. In this method, to get that almond, the rat is going to trip the trap. To set the trap, we want our, our control rod here free of the trap. And I like to do this down flat and spring this back. We engage our rod 
under the bait plate like that and get it settled in nice and then remove your hand free of the trap. In this method, we find that the rat will not escape with the bait. When you set this trap properly, you're going to get a rat. The mouse trap is really too small. You may have effectiveness getting mice, but you want a trap that is strong enough to get a small rat, a medium rat, or a big rat. And in this case, this will basically take care of any normal sized rat. You can get a sense of the power of this trapping method. We have tripped the trap with a pencil. And um, you can see it was able to snap the pencil right in half, just like that. You wouldn't want to get your finger in there. You have to be very careful setting a trap so that you are not the victim. It is said that if you put a trap along an edge in a little dark area, a little runway, or a place where you know they have been, you'll find the effectiveness will, will be very high. I always like to put the strike rod away from me. So when I set the trap, like in a hot water heater cabinet or under a sink or somewhere where the rat has been present, less chance of getting caught in your own trap. If you do set a trap line, if you do set traps out, you want to check them pretty much daily until you have caught the offending rat. The tree, of course, can be a pathway for rats. If you have a branch of an oak tree that arches over the building and comes down and touches the roof, this could easily become a pathway for the rat, but this doesn't give them entry. It's only the roof. You don't want to hack the tree up because rats are getting inside your house. That isn't the solution. And we find this again and again. The rat may be using the tree to get access to the roof, but they can get on the roof anyway. They can climb up siding, shingles, stucco, you name it. They can get access to the building all around the building. The question is, are they able to get in? And this is where you have to be a very, very good observer and realize that a very small entry opening is all they need and they can enlarge it. You can look for their signs of entry, visually inspecting the whole perimeter of the building, especially the eaves, the stem wall, the footing, along the sill plate, anytime a utility penetrates the foundation or the footing of a building, those are possible entry points. Also, they can actually chew through wood shingles. A wood shingle is soft enough for a rat to chew through. It is said all they need is a quarter inch gap. That's wide enough for their mouth parts to get in there and open that hole up. And they'll just chew that open to an entry size hole and gain access to the building, leaving their scent trail to guide other rats inside. So it's not just trapping the rat that's inside, you gotta close the entry points to prevent the rats from re-entering the building. Don't mangle your trees and don't use poisons. Just take the proper precautions and the proper eradication methods and your home will be rat free.